Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante here on the road, of course. Um, I'm trying to get out as many videos this week as I normally do. It's a little challenging sometimes because the internet, like in this particular hotel, is not that great. <laughs> so it takes like an hour and a half to upload one like 10 minute video. Um, but I'll be home soon, at, back in the, uh, the studio, and, uh, you know, doing it as we normally do. But this video uh, was submitted by Phil Przyski, who is a Patreon supporter. Guys, if you go to patreon.com, you get to submit stuff like this at the $5 level. At uh, the $10 level, you get bonus audio and video, and you can support the show for as little as $2 a month. Um, and this, this is pretty amazing. So this is an article in The Intercept about um, the owner of Ring.com sent this email out to his employees where he said, Ring CEO Jamie, uh, Jamie Smirnoff emailed, uh, Siminoff, excuse me, emailed the company Declaration of War. Uh, the message under the subject line, going to war, made two things clear to the home surveillance company's hundreds of employees. Everyone was getting free camouflage press t-shirts. Oh, snap. They look awesome, he said. And we're going to war with anyone who wants to harm a neighborhood, Siminoff wrote. So just to give you some 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 background here. So ring.com is owned by Amazon. So we know that Amazon um, wants to track everything and everybody. Ring.com is one of these home security things. So you have a you can get a little camera on your doorknob and it can you can see who's at your front door anywhere in your house or like if you're you travel for a living like me and you can look on your phone and go, oh who's at my front door? Oh, it's a delivery person. Okay, cool or I don't know this person or, right? But this is a little scary in the sense that this article in The Intercept, and I'll put the link in the show notes below, uh, read through the whole article, it shows how they're just gonna be sharing this data. Of course they claim, oh no, the, the, the camera, we wouldn't, you, you know. We're not going to hijack those cameras. No, no. I mean, it's not like the NSA is hijacking this camera I'm using right now in my hotel room. Not at all. Um, so it's really, and they're working with police departments, and it's, this is, and the article brings up some great points, which is, so if you're just in the neighborhood walking by, and you don't give consent to be photographed or videotaped, but the neighbor does it anyway and gives it to Ring and what, I mean, <laughs> you know, you can put cameras in the house. I mean, you can just like anybody to drive in, somebody's driving by smoking weed, they're gonna get busted. We're just gonna be this nation of surveillance snitches. It's a little horrifying. I'm gonna read some clips from the article here. Um, because it, it and it's all the, the the email that he sent out to his staff was all in this military speak ring war two he referred to it or rw1 would be followed by more right a company now owned by amazon and facing strident criticism over its mishandling of customer data as previously reported by the intercept and the information right has now wants to declare war on everybody is and rings emphasis not only on personal peace of mind but also active crime finding has been instrumental in differentiating its cloud connected doorbell and household uh, surveillance gear from those made by its competitors ring products come with access to social app called neighbors that allows customers to not just keep tabs on their own property but also to share information about suspicious looking individuals and alleged criminality with the rest of the block in other words, Ring's cameras aren't just for keeping tabs on your own stoop or garage. They work to create a private sector security bubble around entire as a residential areas, a neighborhood watch for the area of so-called smart home. Well, people, well, that's cool. We should know who's in it, but this is being used, right? Like some of these other, um, these uh, apps like Citizen, which encourages users to go out and personally document reported 911 calls and next door, which tends to foster lively discussions about non-white people ver strolling through various suburbs. You see how this could be now? 
Yo, you're in an all-white. Who's that black guy coming in my neighborhood? My camera saw a black guy. See how badly that could be used? You know? And, <laughs> you know, I, I find it a little alarming that an Amazon uh, subsidiary is teaming with local law enforcement. Look, if Amazon could use its own police and they were trying to use it, we saw when there were those um, strikes at the Amazon places in Germany and the Amazon security was inside telling people to keep working while the strike was happening outside. Like if Amazon, if Jeff Bezos could get his own military, he would do it. This is a, this is a scary step. Like it, it, it's pretty, the Washington Post, Jeffrey Fowler asked the company about its data sharing relationship with police and was told, our customers are in control of who views their footage, period. We do not have any plans to change this, Fowler wrote. But would Ring draw an ethical line at sharing footage directly with the police, even if there was no, even if there was consent? It wouldn't say. So it's like uh, community crime fighting tool for law enforcement. This is the Ring Neighborhoods Portal. And it provides the police with all the crime-related neighborhood alerts that are posted within their jurisdiction in real time. Why don't we get one of these ring things for all the corporate theft that happens? You know, this is just more keeping us afraid, keeping and, and taking away, telling us that this is better for us. This will keep you safer. This will keep you safer. And I want to show you a video. This is from a, a news channel in Miami. So let's watch this video that I got from this Miami ABC affiliate and pay close attention to the, um, in the upper left-hand corner, whose website is there. Take a look. Police are investigating after a woman says her car was intentionally set on fire. It all captured on a ring camera. Local 10 News reporter Todd Toggins spoke with the car owner and joins us live from Pembroke Pines. Todd. Yeah, this is a pretty quiet neighborhood in Pembroke Pines near Taft and University. That uh, car owner really in shock and you can see the car is a total. It is uh, completely burned out. Now the homeowner wondering why she was targeted. And you can see someone uh, pouring gasoline, what I guess is gasoline, all over my car and then just lighting it up and running away. The burnt out remains of Patricia Lordy's 2015 Cadillac ATS sit in her driveway as a reminder of the arsonist that gave her and her family a heart pounding scare. My daughter woke me up screaming frantic because she said she heard a bang and my car alarm going off. When she came to the front window, the car was engulfed in flames. From her motion-activated ring camera, it appears to be a tall man wearing a hoodie. And after he runs off, he gets into what appears to be a white Dodge Charger. However, he may not have gotten away unscathed. It looks like, like he got burnt in the face, and I think he was surprised from the, re from the reaction that I saw. The crime happened at 12.41 a.m., and perhaps the most cruel part is Patricia's car insurance expired at midnight. My insurance lapsed. I was in the process of um, getting my policy renewed, possibly going with a different insurance company, which was, was something I was going to be doing this morning. So now I'm really screwed. While Pembroke Pines police look for the perpetrator, the fire department says Patricia's lucky it didn't spread to the front of her home. And tonight, she will likely be sleeping with one eye open. I don't know if they meant to target someone else and they came here mistakenly. I moved here six months ago. Um, but why? Like, why would you do this to somebody? I go to work and come home every day. I live my life. This is mind blowing to me. This was Patricia's only mode of transportation or only car. And as you can see, it's completely total. It's burned out. They're going to have to come and tow it away on a flatbed. Um, she does have a GoFundMe that's been set up for her by her family, and that's because she doesn't have insurance. As you heard, it lapsed overnight. If you are interested in trying to help her out and get some uh, some wheels and to be able to get around, uh, you can go to our website at local10.com. In Pembroke Pines, Tatang, Local 10. Do you see that? 
this is how they use local media to scare you into buying stuff. Who was that guy that doused the Cadillac with gasoline? Could be a lunatic, could be an asshole, could be a wingnut, could be an ex of hers, could be a, a pyromaniac, could be any number of people. I have no evidence to, to, to suggest this. I will just say that I wouldn't be shocked if it was somebody that Ring paid to go do it. Right? Or something. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. But even if they didn't, even if Ring is not involved in this at all, they just push this out there. And I'm sure right after this was a local ad for Amazon. I'm sure Amazon has ad time on this channel. So they're just like, push these stories. If you find anybody who using Ring, do a story on it like it's news, but it's an ad for ring.com. It's in, it's on the corner. Oh, cause that's who they got the footage from. So Ring shared the footage with the ABC affiliate in Miami. I'm sorry that that happened to that woman's car. I really am. And the fact she doesn't have insurance, that's awful. I'm sorry about that. I mean, if I owned a Cadillac, I might have insurance. That's just me. But you see how they do this, though? Oh, boy, you better get a ring now. What if some What if some lunatic just runs and sets your car on fire? How often is that? I mean, you know? Because guess what? Then if she, and, you know, if they apprehend the guy, it'll be because of ring.com. Boy, we're running a special right now. You see how scary this is and how they use this fear tactic to get us to buy their stuff for all of us to participate in giving up our own personal rights because we need surveillance for our safety. Remember the Patriot Act after 9-11? Remember how Bush and then Obama just turned us into a surveillance state? Remember when Snowden was a whistleblower and he and Chelsea Manning, when Snowden was an NSA whistleblower and now he's he's a criminal that has to live in Russia? And Julian Assange was just a whistleblower who was just given information that he just put out on the internet? And they're trying to kill him in the Ecuadorian embassy, basically? See how they, this is all connected? It's pretty insane, man. Like. The, the, and, and the audacity that these corporations op, 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 operate, you know? I mean, listen to this. They said we have this Kegel guy says, we, we, we have powerful constitutional safeguards, right? Terms of service, privacy and policy agreements that no one reads. Consent here is a smokescreen. Folks online consent to policies all the time without being meaningfully explained what is happening under data and stakes are much higher under guise of consent that would invite needless surveillance of private lies. lives. Though it's pretty, it's pretty insane. You know? And The Intercept, in this article, provided Ring with a list of detailed questions about the access it provides to police, but the company's response left many of these unanswered. Ring did not address the consequences of bypassing the judicial system to obtain customer videos, albeit with consent, nor did the company answer how it defines or identifies suspicious activity or answer whether there are any guidelines in place regarding the handling or retention of customer videos by law enforcement. Without clear answers to these and other questions, ring owners will simply have to trust Amazon and their local police to do the right thing. Trust Amazon. Trust, trust Jeff Bezos. He's worth $158 million. He got paid $600 million by the CIA. You know, when Facebook was doing that thing, everybody take a photo of yourself and see who you're compared to. They were doing it because they were doing facial recognition software. They were testing out facial recognition software. So I thank you, Phil Przyski, for supporting the show first and foremost uh, at patreon.com slash Grant Melwood and submitting this article because I wasn't aware of this. And then I just did one little Google thing and I saw this clip of this car getting set on fire and 
that's how they ski that's how the local media that, that keeps us scared oh i better get ring now that woman's car got set on fire she wouldn't know who did it we gotta get the ring i gotta get ring and i'm okay who's that suspicious person in my neighborhood to keep us all locked up and afraid of each other no one no news story in the mainstream media is questioning amazon and the privacy rights of people abc7 in miami isn't the intercept is so that's why you guys come to YouTube to get your news. Because they're not going to report this story. Nowhere in that Miami 7 video did you see anything about, like, eh, it raises some questions, though, about personal rights. Because her neighbor viewed it. She would have seen a car set on fire. And you'd call the police, and people would say, did you see a car? And someone would say, oh, we saw a car pull up. And that's how you get, that's how you, people give up. I don't know that we need video cameras everywhere. That's a little weird. It's a little Orwellian. Not a fan. But thank you all for supporting the show. Um, March 10th through the 13th, Ron Placone and I are coming to Lafayette, Louisiana, Oxford, Mississippi, Pensacola, Florida, and New Orleans. Come on out, guys. If you're in those smaller towns, come out and support. You never know. We may never come back <laughs> to Oxford, Mississippi. You never know. So come out and support if you're in the area. When you come to the live show, they're an amazing event. If you want us to come back, we need to sell more tickets. Like, subscribe, share the videos, watch the ads all the way through. When you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Thanks for watching.